Hello, good evening and welcome to Good Morning News. A very good evening to you. I'm Sharifa Tahir. I'm Kifar Richards. President Mahindra Rajapaksa vows that he's not ready to extend powers which lead towards dividing or separating the country. He says that everyone should work in unison for future victories as the country has gained present triumphs with great difficulties. The president was speaking at a ceremony organized in connection with the opening of the new administration building in the Southern Provincial Council at Labudu in Gaul today. The new building has been named as Dakshinapaya. The seven-storied fully-fledged building was completed at a cost of 575 million rupees. Five ministries of the Southern Provincial Council have been shifted to this location with the aim of providing efficient service for the people. It also comprised of a large auditorium with a seating capacity of 500. Southern Provincial Secretariat has received the ISO 9001-2008 Quality Standard Certificate for maintaining it with streamlined management. President Raj Baksa presented the ISO certificate to the Chief Secretary of the province, Mrs. W.K.K. Atukorala. Governor of the province, Kumari Balasuriya, presented a memento to President Mahind Raj Baksa for his services rendering to the people in the southern province. Addressing the ceremony, the President noted that persons who are not fulfilling the public service properly cannot go forward in their careers. He added that a parliament or provincial council should serve the people. Government officials have responsibility to understand the needs of the people and to make necessary commitment to solve their problems. It is better to take measures honoring state policies without allowing conflicts between officials and politicians, he said. If the government servant has fulfilled or rather has failed to fulfill his duty correctly, then we cannot go forward. He said that public sector officials should take measures to solve the problems of the people. राज्य प्रतिपत्तियाँ तीनों ना ये प्रतिपत्तियाँ तो गरुण गरमी निलंदारी ना दिशपालन जिंग अतर चेन यम गैटुंग ना तीव्र निनो नोवी कातियों तो किरी मत आए बड़ा त्यागपात भी निकलाई माधाकी दिशपालन या मनोवा क्यों आ राज्य सेवक या तमंगे युतु का महारिया का रीतु नुकलो अभी इधर ये तो जानते पुलों Kamangi Gavatena Janata, Kandul Piragin in the Janata, we Prasna Aragin in the Janata, Ungi as well as in a Kandul Pisadala, and the Puluan Kamatino and Angobut, Ekatamai, Obalabaga and the Jagrani Kilamadaki. Minister Dinarat Nabirako, Chief Minister of the Province, Shan Vijaylal De Silva, Deputy Speaker Chandima Virakkuri, Deputy Minister Nishant Muthuhettikam, Parliamentarians Ramesh Patirana, Mohan De Silva, Manu Shinanakkara and People's Representatives of the Provincial Council's Padishya Sabhas attended the opening ceremony. A three-member investigation committee report revealed that the reason for the moving of a train engine for a distance of 25 kilometers without an engine driver was the negligence of shunting engine driver and his assistants. The committee was appointed by the general manager of Sri Lanka La Railways. The three-member committee report was handed over to Transport Minister Kumara Valgama at the Maradara Railway Department Auditorium today. The relevant shunting engine, which was at the hydraulic locomotive shed, had moved from Maradana to Mount Lavinia without a driver. This incident took place after the handing over of the locomotive to the shed by the engine driver for engine service. The train began moving after the shunting engine driver and assistant had got down from it after starting the engine. The general manager of Sri Lanka Railways, B.A. Ari Ratan, said that this was clearly recorded in the CCTV camera system at the locomotive shed. He pointed out that this incident took place as a result of the negligence of the shunting engine driver who failed to make necessary protections after starting the engine. This driver and his assistant cannot leave the engine after starting it. They have violated this law. If they want to get down from the engine, what they should do was to apply brakes and shut off the engine. They have failed to follow the 
this procedure. The engine has started moving when the brake system is released automatically. Locomotives will maintain a certain speed until it is changed by some person. He added that it does not work like a vehicle which will stop immediately after releasing the accelerator. the three member committee has made 11 recommendations on how to prevent such incidents. The Department of Railways said that the decision has been taken to honor the services of four employees who took measures to stop the railway engine. Education Minister Bandal Gunavardhan says that no decision has been taken to abolish the Year 5 scholarship examination. A proposal on this examination was included in the report submitted by the National Education Commission. Addressing a media conference in Colombo today, the minister said that a decision on this scholarship examination will be taken after a wide debate and also dialogue. Education Minister Bandula Gunawardana told media personnel that as the subject minister, he cannot take arbitrary decisions. At the first instance, it will be submitted to the consultative subcommittee and later to the cabinet for its endorsement. After that, it will be presented in parliament. However, this bill was not passed in parliament. The National Education Commission has given its recommendation on this matter. After that, he said that he made a statement that the year 5 scholarship examination will be abolished in 2016. The new system will be introduced at that time. This commission will decide as to whether the examination should continue or not in 2015. Governor of the Northern Province, Major General G. A. Chandrasiri says that this year's GCA advanced level examination results had given a clear and powerful answer to allegations leveled by local and foreign powers sympathizing with Tiger Organization Development and Human Rights in the North. The highest number of 63.8% of candidates had qualified for the 2013 GCA advanced level examination to enter universities. The government has spent 4 billion rupees to ensure the education rights of children in the North during the last four years. 630 schools which were kept closed in the North due to terrorism have been reopened. 2,300 new teacher appointments were made to improve education in the province. 1,327 teaching appointments for subjects like mathematics, science, English and information technology have been made during this year. 1,995 schools are conducting academic sessions for over 250,000 students in the North. The number of teachers exceeds 15,000. The government has focused attention to build 91 Mahindodia laboratories to improve the information technology knowledge of children in the north. 17 selected schools in the province are to be developed totally. A sum of 35 million rupees has been allocated per school in the area. A program to provide a glass of milk and a nutritious meal for children in the north is being implemented in 250 schools. This program was launched from the Watakachi Mahavidyalaya under the patronage of the president. Over 10,000 bicycles have been distributed among children who face transport difficulties. The government has taken measures to improve physical and mental development of students, creating education awakening in the northern province. As a result of these initiatives, the highest number of students have been selected from the province for university admissions. These students have excelled in the GCE advanced level examination. Accordingly, the present situation in the north provides a fine answer to accusations leveled by powers sympathizing with tigers. Human rights of elders and children have been protected, creating a conducive environment for them to lead peaceful and prosperous lives. Well, the world will mark the centenary of the First World War in 2014. This war, which began on the 28th of July 1914, centering Europe, was ended in 1918. Although a resurgence of imperialism was an underlying cause, the immediate trigger of the First World War was the 28th June 1914 assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria, heir to the throne of Austria-Hungary by Yugoslav National Gabrielo Princip in Sarajevo. Italy and Bulgaria entered the First World War arena in 1950. Romania joined in the war later. It was spread worldwide gradually. Around 9 million people died 
in this fifth greatest strategy tragedy in human history. Friendly countries led by Great Britain emerged victorious in the First World War. In the aftermath, a great economic crisis was reported worldwide. Although the First World War had been ended officially on the 11th of November 1918, people in the world had to face its repercussions for several more years afterwards. President Maharaj Paksa says that the countrywide massive development process will become meaningless if the country has failed to build a disciplined future generation with good qualities. He added that the whole society as well as parents should be committed to direct them on the correct path. The president was speaking at a religious ceremony held at the Urupala Shri Ratanajyoti Piravena Vihare in Thehagoda Matare, Matare today. The president declared open the new Buddhist shrine and two-storied Rohana Sangha Sabha headquarters building constructed in memory of uh, the Pulam Marue Hemasiri Nayakatera. The President presented Sacred Area Act of Appointment. Urapara Sri Ratana Jyoti Piravana Vihare is a great education center in the south. President Rajapaksa called on the chief priest of the temple, the Venerable Gonadeni Thapasi Nayakatera, after participating in religious observances. <laughs> It was on the gathering, President Rajapaksa said that young Buddhist priests should be armed with the knowledge of languages as Theravada Buddhism is a noble gift that could be given to the world by the island nation. He added that the government is constructing roads, expressways, railway lines, power stations and improving hospitals and schools. However, it is essential to look after children and discipline them with good qualities. If we fail to mold the characters of the children, then the country, society and the nation cannot experience beneficial results of development, he said. ಸದಾಚಾರ <laughs> ಸಮಾಜೇ ಗೊಡಗಾಂತೆ ಅಲು ನಾವು ಪರಪುರ ಗೊಡಗಾಗಂತ ಅಪಿಸಿಯಲು ದಿನ ಕಪವಿಯ ಯುತಯಾಯಿ ಮಾ ವಿಶ್ವಾಸ ದ ಮಹಾನಾಯಕ ಆಫ್ ದ ಶಮಪಾಲಿ ಮಹಾನಿಕಾಯ ರೋಹನ ಸೆಕ್ಟ್ ದ ವೆಂಡಬಲ್ ಗುಂಬದ್ದಲ ನಂದಾರಾಮ ಥೇರ ದ ಮೆಂಬರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮಹಾಸಂಘ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಮಹೇಂದ್ರ ಯಾಪ ಅಭಿವಾದನ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಣ್ ಯಾಪ ಅಭಿವಾದನ ಗವರ್ನರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾವಿನ್ಸ್ ಕುಮಾರಿ ಬಾಲಸೂರ್ಯ ಡೆಪ್ಯೂಟಿ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಹೇಮಾ ಗುಣಸೇಖರ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿಜಯ ದಹನಾಯಕ ವರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ A program to issue necessary medicinal drugs sufficient for four months to the Medical Supplies Division is to be implemented for the first time in Sri Lanka. The government has taken this initiative to prevent the shortage of medicinal drugs in hospitals. This was disclosed by the Director of the Medicinal Supplies Division, Dr. Kamal Jaisinghe. The new program is to be implemented from January next year. Letters of credit have been already issued to relevant companies to purchase pharmaceuticals. Over 1000 varieties of medicinal drugs required to government hospitals are to be supplied under this initiative. The Medicinal Supplies Division has made a request from regional drug stores and main hospitals to provide necessary shortage facilities. Some countries were reluctant to supply pharmaceuticals to Sri Lanka due to the monopoly of certain companies. However, many countries have stepped in to supply medicinal drugs to Sri Lanka as a result of the pharmaceutical procurement policy adopted by Health Minister Maitri Pala Sirisena. In the Sri Lanka discussions on finding solutions to the problems of fishermen are to begin in Chennai Tamil Nadu on the 20th of January 2014. The poaching of Indian fishermen in Sri Lankan territorial waters has become a serious problem at present. Over 200 fishermen who carried out illegal fishing in Sri Lankan waters are now in the custody in the island. Over 70 fishing boats were seized by the police. Meanwhile, 213 Sri Lankan fishermen are in Indian custody. The Indian Foreign Ministry said that the discussion between the two countries has been arranged to solve the problem. Representatives of the societies of fishermen and officials are expected to attend the discussions. 
An Indian origin Singaporean has been deported to Singapore from the United States after he had completed four-year jail term for offenses related to trying to buy arms for Tiger Organization. Washington authorities said that the U.S. prisoner is prohibited from re-entering the United States. It has been confirmed that Singaporean Balraj Naidu Raghavan has made an attempt to purchase a stock of firearms worth 900,000 US dollars in 2006 for Tiger organizations. He was arrested by American secret agents. Following the hearing of the case, Raghavan was found guilty and a four-year imprisonment had been imposed on him. He was accused of planning to purchase a grenade launcher, several snipers and machine guns. It has been reported that Raghavan had planned to hand over these arms to Tiger terrorists in the international territorial waters beyond Sri Lanka. The court also imposed a 37 months imprisonment on another Singaporean Hanifa who aided the abetted Raghavan. Some of the officials expressed their appreciation to the government for the setting up of the Vinagoma Development Department. The new department will commence its functions on the 3rd of January 2014. At least 27,000 some of the officials and around 50,000 Divinaguma beneficiaries are to be benefited by the setting up of the new department. Some of the officers will become stakeholders of the public service under this initiative. They will be given all privileges enjoyed by government servants. A media conference was held in Colombo today to brief journalists on the setting up of Divinaguma Development Department. The General Secretary of All Island Samurzi and Agriculture Research Assistant Officers Union, Jagat Kumara, said that all Samurzi officers pay a tribute to the government for this progressive decision and take measures to make it a reality. Media Coordinator of Sri Lanka Independent Samurzi Managers and Coordinating Officers Union, Pradeep Rohan, pointed out that the Vinagama Development Department will become a historic department in Sri Lanka Administrative Service. Secretary of the Sri Lanka Independent Samurzi Managers and Coordinating Officers Union, Gamini Abhavikrama, thanked President the Rajapaksha, Minister Basil Rajapaksha and the government for the setting up of the Vinagama Development Department. This is a historic and golden opportunity provided by the government to carry out the development process in Sri Lanka after the war. Well, an entertaining news item that's regarding tomorrow. Ridhi Rai concert of Sri Lankan film stars will be telecast over Rupohani from tomorrow at 9 p.m. Viewers will get an opportunity to win airline tickets as well. An airplane will appear on the television screen during the telecast of Ridhi Rai concert and what viewers should do is to indicate the number of times of the appearance of the airplane and send an SMS to RUP space, the correct answer and you can SMS it to 6797. Sri Lanka Rupon Corporation invites its viewers to be a part of Sri Lanka Telecom Ridhi Rai concert on the 31st night, that's tomorrow. Uh, Formula One former racing driver Michael Schumacher is in an induced coma and a critical condition after striking his head on a rock in the French Alps in a, stri a, a skiing accident. French doctors said that they cannot make any statement on his conditions at the moment. The former racing driver fell on his head uh, when he was, uh, uh, he was on a private a skiing trip with his son in the French Alps. He had been wearing a helmet though at the time of the accident but he sustained severe injuries to his head. Doctors said that the conditions of Schumacher was critical after performing two brain surgeries. 44 year old Michael Schumacher has won the World Motor Racing Champion Formula 1 for seven times. Doctors say now Schumacher is fighting for his life. The first test between Sri Lanka and Pakistan will begin in Abu Dhabi tomorrow. Sri Lanka has won 10 out of 42 tests played between the two countries. Pakistan has recorded 16 victories. 17 tests ended in draws. Pakistan was in the fourth place in ICC test cricket ratings, while Sri Lanka was placed sixth. Sri Lanka has qualified to play Hong Kong Rugby Sevens which will begin in March next year. Sri Lanka was in the third place among seven rugby teams in Asia.
Kocha Municipal Council team beat Gold Municipal Council by one goal to nil, winning the soccer tournament organized by the Sri Lanka Prakote Football League and the Kocha Municipal Council. And now for a quick look at the weather before we leave. The Med Department forecasts a dry weather condition after tomorrow. However, slight rain could be expected in the north, central, eastern and over provinces. A dry weather will prevail in other areas in the island tomorrow. Well, that's all the news we have for you this evening. Do enjoy the rest of the programs. Take care and good night. Good night.